Now, years ago, in 1980s, Lynn and I were living on $18,000 a year. I was working for my dad and doing ministry in the Tulsa area of different types. And we had two kids. Shiloh was going to be born in about two months. And God put it on my heart that we needed to head back, to head up to Kansas City, Missouri. I'd been traveling three hours each way to Springfield trying to finish up the last part of seminary that I had. And God put it on my heart that we needed to move up there. And it was so strong in my heart that I said, Lenny, you need to start packing. I got a for sale sign. I put it out in the front yard. Well, my dad came, and my dad, whom I worked for, he saw the sign in the front yard, and he began to talk to me about it. I said, I just feel like it's time that God wants us to go there. And his response was, you've got two kids. You've got one on the way. You're going to starve if you go up there. Well, one thing I knew for sure was I wasn't going up there without my dad's blessing. And now I had the obstacle of finances. I had the obstacle of a new baby coming. I had the obstacle of my father's heart that God was going to have to fix before I would be ready to go up there. Well, we went a couple of months. Nobody was looking at the house. The Tulsa housing market at that time was horrible. And people were selling their houses for much less than they were offering for them. And so a couple of months went by, and that it was getting close to August, and it was, it was early June. I woke up early June, and it was like somebody came into the house with a baseball bat and hit me in my lower back area. And it got worse and worse to the point where I all I could do was just lay on the ground and just writhe. Lynn called my parents. My dad came over, and my dad got me in his van. We went to the hospital. And after going through all the procedures, they found out that I had a severe kidney stone going on. In fact, from the point that they had me in the hospital emergency room, I woke up the next day uh, in a hospital bed. And something happened when I woke up in that hospital bed. Because I had been adding up on my little list all the obstacles, one after another, of God pulling off what he had placed in my heart. And now all these little obstacles in comparison to this huge one now. All of a sudden, I've got hospital bills I can't pay off. I'm in a situation, I was just overwhelmed by the impossibility of it all right now. And what happened to me in that hospital bed was I began to get silly with joy. That suddenly I realized it was totally beyond anything that I could pull off now. I couldn't manipulate it for God. I'd been trying to figure out how I was going to do it for God all along. And suddenly I realized it was impossible now. And I was overwhelmed that God, this is yours now. If it's really of you, you're going to do it. And you're going to get the glory for this. My dad came in a little bit later that day. And my dad um, said to me, you're going to Missouri. You're going to Missouri. You need to go now. He said, I'm going to give you severance pay from, from work. I'm going to help you sell your house. And our house sold uh, about a week or so later. A lady walked in with her husband. She says, I love everything about it. I mean, you could see our house. You know God was working in that. And they offered us exactly what we were, we were asking for it. And we ended up right on time. In fact, another lady in our neighborhood said that, uh, who, who Lynn knew through a, a Bible study, said, well, my uncle is up there. He's a pastor of a search committee of a church up there. And that was the church that I ended up pastoring all my years in seminary when I was there. God was just orchestrating and working through it all. But it came to a point of realizing it doesn't matter if it's impossible. The question is, has God said it? And that's the question of faith. It's taking time to hear what God is saying. And when you hear it, don't let anything stop your belief. You know, God has, has laid out some places in life that he wants to call you to. And he wants to draw you out. He's calling you out to trust him to those places. He wants you to believe for something bigger than you've ever experienced before in life. And he's calling you to trust. He's calling our church to that as well. And God is calling us to that. And you know, the, the truth is, it's not an option. It's what we've been created for. And to choose anything less is to miss out on the enjoyment and the fullness of what God placed you in this world for.